Welcome, 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 guys. Hi, uh, this is Aaron. I am from some. I'm with the people who have Soma Games, and today I'm working on a 3D model of Scum Snout, the Were Rat. This is what I've got so far, and for him, mostly wanting him to look piratey but brutish. And there's parts that aren't quite finished yet, like on the tail there. Uh, and then also like hemming and stuff, but right now I'm actually working on this skull that's going to be go that is going to go on uh, uh, right here on his shoulder. This, this skull itself is probably a little bit small, but still looks good. Hey John, it's nice to, nice to see you here. Hey Amelia. How is how are you doing? Well, I've, I've been having a lot of fun with 
working on this character. So right now I'm working on like getting this hemline here the way I want it to. And right, the way I was doing before was that I was just noticing that the work I was doing on this side when it was being copied over to the left side, it wasn't doing the same thing I wanted it to. So I used a tool that copies over to make sure that's exactly the same. Using the symmetry tool, I used this um, in a geometry window to sim copies so that way we could copy this side over to this side. So now like when I go through here does exactly the same thing that I want it to do. Eventually I'll turn off symmetry and then I actually start adding in some details like tears and rips that I don't want to copy to the other side. But right now I just want to get a kind of a interesting headline on the pants. Not really, at least I don't think so. If you're talking about doing, I don't think so, Amelia. Um, mostly, at least for me, I've been mostly working with the characters and stuff like that. <laughs> working on character design and concepts there. But yeah, um, in terms of that, like I've been, like I said, I've, I've mostly worked on characters um, in 3D coat. And I use uh, the cutoff tool a lot to get the generic shapes out. So like if I wanted to cut off this area because it wasn't the shape I wanted it to, I could do that. Break it right back. So then just so now there's this nice big cutout area here. So I could do it if I needed to. But and I have used it when I'm, I'm shaping like. A big blob, but I, for the most part, I use grow, um, smooth clay, and then I actually one of my favorite tools right now is scrape. Mostly because I can get it lets me do like the more specific stuff I would like to do. Or at least it, it takes it down little by little. I use a cutoff tool when I can take off a big chunk, but the the um, 
the sculpt to the scrape tool, I can just kind of take it off. In general, it helps me get more of definitive shapes. Or at least more of the shapes I'm wanting to get. And when it comes to getting like sharper edging, I do have a thing for pinch because it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It kind of makes everything a little bit sharper instead of just round edges. Would I use that to get some of the look of this skull up here? And why did it use to get some of the points along the fingers and and those pieces there too? Hello, Adam. Thanks for joining us. In case you guys don't know, 
Ariane Wynn is also known as Emily, and she works in the office as well. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just actually adding in some more wrapping, kind of like there is on the side. This is what I tend to start with, or what I do start with, so that way I can just kind of get an idea of what the direction I want it to look like, what I want it to be. Oops. And then I'm using a tool called the Curve Tool. Then I'll go ahead and come back through this and like flatten it out so it actually looks like like actual like cloth versus just a rope. And hello. Hello there, Ke Kila. How are you doing today? If I remember correctly, I think Amelia works with John Collins. Up in Seattle. I think it's the right Amelia at least. I don't remember Amelia's last name. So it could be the wrong one.
attitude. Matthias 720. How are you doing? Yeah, I can edit their width. Um, not after I apply the tool, but do while I'm working with it. Yeah, I can. I just, I had actually already, I had chosen like what size I wanted it at already. And actually I did have a different width for when I did this secondary one that went in here and then I just kind of, because I flattened it out a little bit more. I found that the curves tool is the easiest when working with stuff like bindings or any extra like little, like, but mostly actually with bindings or like ties and stuff like that. It's how I did, the curves tool is how I created this necklace here. Um, at one point I was playing with using primitives to create bindings, but they didn't feel nearly as natural. It was, a, it was a, changing the width was a small piece, but like you have this. So you can see how big the my green circle here is. If I hold down and then go, pull to the right a little bit, it goes bigger, goes smaller, and go fairly small. So I could go like this and then go to it even bigger go here and you see it actually just its width as it travels. I'm glad that you stopped by. It's always fun to have people here, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this. Since you just since you just came in, just so I can explain what I'm working on, I'm working on a Whereat character for our game. And his name is Scum Snout. Scum snout the scummy. I like calling him scum snossage. I don't know why, it just sounds funny to me. better about what I'm doing here. And probably what's going to end up happening is I'll probably move this necklace up a little bit. Yeah, uh, so because he's a were rat, we, we were looking at what the descriptions of were rats were versus regular rats or stoats or other, and other ver vermin. And they have no ears, little to no neck. And it's like, you know what? We're definitely get, well, we, can, we can work without ears, but we like his neck. But like figuring out how to design a very li a, a, a species that has been described with basically those two things in mind, it's like, well, how do what do we want to do with this? We get a lot of freedom with this, and how we portray it. Oh, that.
I've been working on this guy since yesterday, at least with the clothing. I was, and then uh, two days ago, I was working on um, like how his body would actually look. And the things I have yet to yet to finish is I'm finishing up this bandage that was going across his going across this that's actually holding this skull right here, which is here. I was holding that in place. And then he also has, and then I also need to fi uh, do detail work on this here, and a little bit more detail work on the pants as well. I want to put in some t um, some tears and snares and stuff like that. I might also add in a couple more pieces of jewelry. Like I like how he has the like I like that I added in some piercings, and I want to actually maybe add in some tail ring pieces or like actual like finger rings. And then the other thing I'm thinking about that isn't to, something to do at this stage is to actually add in maybe some tattoos, since those are described in the books as being like permanent and affecting the fur, essentially. So I think that would be fun to add in, like, since he has something on the shoulder, maybe not adding a tattoo on the shoulder, but like maybe a little bit since he has his, has a lot, so it's like, like adding a tattoo here or something. Or maybe a little bit on his face, I don't know yet. Actually, the other thing I need to add in too is scars. I had some scars in er earlier, but then I had to go over them when I was fixing some things. And yeah. Actually, right now I'm just going to go ahead and move it right in here. Make sure that the, it looks like the, the bindings definitely go underneath. Which also means that I, I can just go ahead and basically maneuver these down so that way if I take away the vest. Yeah, okay, it actually still is there. But like you can see, I actually got rid of this part here. Oh, I definitely prefer using the primitives. The curves, the curves is I feel like it's more for detail work. Like I said, like when I'm put adding in these bindings or in this, but if I'm starting off, I want uh, primitives is a lot more helpful for getting a lot of bigger pieces done. Like bigger pieces, like modeling. Like here's a cylinder for for the main part of the body. Here's a cylinder for his legs. Here's a cylinder for this and this and this, and maybe a sphere for the head. It's just a lot easier. I've even used cylinders um, because when I open up. From this, you can see I actually have a box up here that that was what I used. Um, that box there was used actually to add in teeth to the skull. And so it, it just becomes a little bit more helpful. Like, it, like I find more, and I have all these shapes up here, up at the top, to be able to choose from to use. And then I can go ahead and just like either scrape away from it, or I can add to it, or I use more than one primitive to like create a new shape. Like I did that with the skull, I had actually a box attached. I had a cylinder attached to a sphere to make, to make this, and then I cut off that bottom half of it after I had it um, in there. Um, and yeah, adding it in patches is not a bad idea at all. I probably need to make it a... I might make it a different layer so that way it can look different. Like right now the colors are just like some basic shaders so I can tell the difference between these two different things or see things and they're going to be the rough, these rough colors. But like these pants, I'm planning on being striped. And although I do like this red right here, um, like I don't know if these bindings would be this white or like kind of like more like this. And then this piece here, this necklace, is actually going to have multi-colors. What was I working on? I was working on the, this binding here. Which means I need this jacket back.
I can see right now that this is what would come down a bit more. Adding a little divot there so that way when the when it comes to actually like when it comes to the texturing it will be seen. That won't be just like it won't be a painted into piece. Yeah, I'll probably try and match that red. Although I do remember I have a red that I've picked out from the earlier, um, some earlier work that I was going to use for most of our piratey bourbon. I just want to smooth this out so that way I can get a little bit more details. Hold on, details. I just want to like how rough it was looking. It actually depends on how you approach something, like which angle you're coming in from. Otherwise, tools can take out or will affect certain things differently. Like if I try to take, if I try to go right here, see how my my circle of influence is changing, which way it's facing on the model. If I try to go in here; it will cut into some things. So I have to imagine. So I have to remember to stay at a fairly like perpendicular. A perpendicular angle to the place to the to the space on the model that I am working on. Oh, okay. I kind of brought it forward a little bit and just makes it actually stay in place. It's not exactly in place anymore. I'm going to probably have to go back and move things around on the necklace, but now you can see where, it actually, where it's like affecting things. Or it's not like it's not going halfway into the cloth. What 
do that. I, I don't know what I just did. But I didn't want that. One thing I like about Free to Coat is that there's an autosave that comes up probably about every 5-10 minutes. I think it's every 10 minutes. But at the same time, it can, get, it can be annoying because sometimes like, wait, why is my program stopping? Why is it not working? Oh wait, it's not saving for me, which is nice. And I'm glad it thinks of me that way. Or it thinks to do that. But at the same time, it can be annoying. go ahead and actually at this point since I'm not getting anything where I won't clean that I'm gonna go to my jacket layer. Go ahead and just actually put my jacket layer up a little bit on the ending. Just do that. No, it's like not gonna be the way. Not the same way at least. Okay, saw something quickly. Just up with the tail, I want to smooth out. Thinning out. Oh, that's really cool, Matthias. I know that I will let JD, um, who's one of our marketing guys, know about that.
don't see why we wouldn't um, want to be be involved with that at all. Um, I will definitely let ed other people here know. I'm sure that Emily, probably who's been reading chat, probably already knows about it, or has probably already written it down. And hey, and there we there we are officially saying yes. Right now I'm just like kind of filling in the spot that got messy because of some cleaning up I had to do. That's very exciting. entirely happy with how this tail is looking. Just just this part. So I'm actually gonna cut it off and just really quickly replace it. I'm talking about the tail sleeve, not the tail. So then I'm gonna use a primitive, reset it. Which means it's way up there. Hmm. Not the damn not the thing I wanted. I apologize if it's going slow, it's kinda like
So I'm just examining to see where I want to work on next. Okay, I have a little bit more to do here, I think. But or not, I think I have to do now. I have a little more to do there because I want to make it a little bit raggedy up that end. I'm thinking about is that I want this to be a little thinner so that way when I cut through it, like say like this, you can see that it's there a little bit faster so it's kind of like pairing like that. I go too far into that because I, I would easily get lost in doing that. I don't want to be done while I'm in symmetry mode. I will make sure that the, the markings are unique. They aren't just like easily recognizable as oh this guy's the same as both sides. There we go. I typically work on a tablet, and for most things, I am actually um, using my my with my pen. But right now, actually, for this because I don't want to like scratch up the surface too much by pressing so hard, I'm actually using my mouse. It gives me a little bit more, it's like a tad bit more accuracy, but then also just the same consistent pressure. Just was smoothing it out.
Todd. <laughs> well, you can always put it in. I know that we don't always stream Red Wall content, but we stream every other week art content. And we were do working through Twitch, and we're now seeing if YouTube Live is a better conduit for our streams. But we always stream um, on Thursdays from roughly 1 to 2 p.m. Um, was it West Coast time? I can't remember what it actually is. This one where just like you can always put it in the calendar, and if you don't actually end up coming that day, kind of might it might just help to keep it and keep it in your mind. Like, oh yeah, hey, we're we're streaming this day. Like I know last week we did um, we played a game, not Fibbage. We played a game last week as an office, and you can see us making fun of each other. Um, and then this next week we play Quiplash. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Emily. Played Quiplash last week, and then this next week we're actually talking about. We're planning on talking about. Um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting all my all the scheduling things right now. Uh, we're having another like art-related stream, but it's more. But it's gonna be headed by our technical artist, Gavin. And so. Yeah. Yeah, the PBR stream. Which, Emily, what does PBR, PBR stand for again? Oh, okay. So, I don't take my word for it. Yes. <laughs> Do not take my word for anything that we're doing in the next, in this next week. We do announce on Twitter.
right now I am I have a bit of experience with it but mostly it's experience I've learned here at the shop actually and I think for me what I'm good at is I'm good with characters specifically so being able to figure out how to do the character models is fun but then ask me to do something uh, like just a basic basic object like that's not an organic object say like a sled for an example and it takes me forever to figure out how to do it but I'm fairly I, I like I like organic objects a lot Uh, Twitch name is also Soma Games, so it should be twitch.tv backslash Soma Games. I don't know, depending on how well you do with your on YouTube, you may or may not continue streaming there as well. But you can go and look at I think past broadcasts there. Although I think we take those broadcasts and also put them on my YouTube account. Alright guys, it is after 2, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm at a good stopping point at least. Um, and uh, to quickly ask, to answer Xenotion's question, this character is, his name is Scum Snout, and he is a were-rat from the Redwall series. Which is, a were is some sort of hybrid creature described as having no ears and little to no neck, which we kind of have a neck on ours, but a big neck. But right now he's in Tifos and yeah. And this is this is scum snout. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Thanks for thanks for joining us. It's been fun. Here is one last look around. At what I got to work on today. And again, thanks for joining us, guys. Yes, exactly, like in Matabeo. Hey, guys, have fun. Have a great day.